It was all fine, perfect, for seven months. So when did you realise something was wrong? 33 weeks, um, I was sat down, we were like playing Monopoly as a family, and um, I remember just sitting there going, oh, I can't feel her much today. And um, I remember telling Tom, and he was like, oh, you'll be fine, just wait a little bit. And I remember getting a little kick, and um, I was saying, well, that's not enough, she's normally really active. And I said, no, we need to go to hospital. And it, like, it was like a, a weird gut instinct, like a mother's feeling. And I remember just going to hospital and then within 45 minutes they performed the emergency C-section. That must have been quite terrifying. It was. I didn't know what was going on and didn't have a clue. Um, I remember just screaming out my mum's name and it was all a whirlwind. It's like a blur now when I think of it. So you went to the hospital, they validated your concerns and took you in for an emergency C-section. What happened when you came around? Um, I remember just wanting to see her and see if she was okay and she'd been taken already and I was just lying in bed like kind of out of it and I was there for about four hours and then I got told that she had to move hospital and so therefore I followed with Tom. And had you seen her at that point? Um, I think I got 10 seconds of a glimpse and I was just like oh she's so beautiful and then that was it. So Consi was in intensive care for a month what was that month like for you and Tom? Uh, it was just a month of hell. It was up and down. It was an emo literally an emotion emotional roller coaster. Um, one day she'd be getting better. The next something had happened. I'd be sat there with Tom just looking at her heart rate monitor on the screen, just reading numbers, identifying if she's okay, the numbers are okay, you know? Is she weeing? Like, and just, I just wanted to hold her, but obviously I couldn't. And I wanted to touch her over there. I'd be scared. I'd wash my hands like 10 times. And so she was born seven weeks premature. What did that mean in terms of the kind of care that she needed? Um, she wasn't in a closed incubator because she was a bit older. She weighed a healthy weight. It was, she was four and a half pounds. So for that early, that's a good size. Um, but she had a really bad heart problem um, where she just wasn't strong enough to pump around her body. And therefore she just needed, she was on loads of medication, you know, loads. So have the doctors been able to give you any answers? No, not really. I mean, we received the post-mortem results back and it just basically, it was just unlucky. She wasn't fully formed properly. It could have been to do with genes maybe, um, but there, there isn't really an answer. It's just, it's just like a one-off. How does that make you feel being told that it's just one of those things and you were just unlucky? Uh, why me? <laughs> But, um, I mean, I can't reverse it and I can't go back, so it's just, I have to kind of learn how to deal with it. How has it affected your relationship? Because obviously people grieve in very different ways. It's not been the greatest. I mean, we, we clash with the grieving thing. We don't end up arguing and he bottle it up, his emotions, and he doesn't want to talk about things. And it's just kind of pushed us apart quite a bit, which is, you just can't help really. You've touched on this already, but can you tell me more about the steps you're taking to feel better in yourself about what's happened? A lot of self-help, talking to friends, therapy, reading loads of books. In fact, I mean, at the, the time she was alive, this made me realise so much anyway how precious life is, so. Consi's death came quite soon after your mum died and you've talked on social media about imagining the two of them in heaven together. Is that something that is a source of comfort? Yeah, um, I feel my mum around me a lot and knowing that she's with my mum, it gives me so much like comfort and peace. Um, and I know they're both angels and they're looking down on me and they're helping me in this little crazy world that we're living in anyway. And yeah, I, I take comfort from that a lot. Has it made you want to help others who go through the same situation? Yeah, massively. I've created an app to do with mental health, which is going to help a lot of people. The app's called Consi. Um, it's, gonna, it's basically an instant self-help. It's like a Bible for mental health. And the name of the app obviously carries a lot of significance. I called the app for that before she had passed, so it's just really weird that it was there waiting to be finished. And she's left me a kind of legacy in that, so that'll be my duty for her to finish off. What one piece of advice would you give to someone who's gone through the same thing as you and is really struggling? To not bottle it up, to speak to somebody, no matter if it's just your mum, your friend, a therapist, any of these charities, and to to grieve in your own way, but just know that you're not alone and that there are millions of other people going through the same thing.